Hello everyone, it's Rachel from Desert Blossom Crafts. Welcome back to my channel where I share crochet patterns, stitch tutorials, brutally honest crochet reviews, and all the like. Today we're going to be learning how to make the seaside mug rugs. This is a new free crochet pattern on my blog and it works up super quickly and has these really pretty shells in the center. Since these work up so fast, we're going to try to keep this tutorial quick and painless. I hope you guys enjoy it! To get started with these mug rugs, there's just a few materials you're going to need. You're going to need some DK weight yarn. I'm using Mary Maxim Mellow Spun. This is a really pretty and soft DK weight. It's just made out of acrylic, 70% acrylic and 30% nylon. The link to this will be below. If you don't have this, you can use other DK weight yarn, and I'm sure you could use worsted weight yarn as well. Your coasters might just turn out a little bit bigger, a tiny bit bulkier than if you're using DK weight. And then for a hook, I am using a 4mm or G hook. If you decide to change to worsted weight yarn, you may want to go up a hook size to an H. But that is all you need to get started. So to make these coasters, we're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to start by chain, chaining 17. We're going to start with just a regular single crochet row, and then we'll jump into the shell row, which is really repetitive through the whole mug rug, which is really nice. Okay, so here is my chain of actually 18. We're going to have 17 single crochet when we're done, but we need a turning chain. So make sure you do 18 chains and then work in the second chain from your hook, make a single crochet, and just continue to single crochet all the way across for this first row, just going in each chain until you have 17 single crochet. So here are my 17 single crochet. For row two, we're going to chain four and turn because we're going to be doing a lot of triple crochets in this pattern. So to start, yarn over twice to make your first triple crochet and we're going to go in the second single crochet here because this chain is going to count as our first triple crochet. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that is a triple crochet. It's one yarn over higher than a double crochet. Now we're just going to do this until we have five triple crochets total. So here I have my chain and two more, so three. This is going to be number four and five. And once you have five, then it's time to get started with our first shell stitch. So to make the shell, you're going to skip three single crochets. So one, two, three, and we're going to go in the fourth one right here. Just start by making a triple crochet in that fourth one there. It'll feel a little bit different, but that's okay. And there is the side of our shell. Now to make the shell, we're just going to do chain one and triple crochet into the same exact stitch a few times. So here I'm going back into that stitch and completing my triple crochet. And I'm just going to do that until I have five triple crochets in the same stitch. So it's kind of funny, we have five on the edge and then we're also going to have five in the shell as well. Just remember that you're chaining one in between each triple crochet for the shell. So there's our fourth one. And let's do one more. Okay, so there is the shell all done. Now to finish, we're just going to skip three again. One, two, three. And we should have five more single crochets that we're going to make triple crochets in right now. So skip those three. My finger is on the one we're going in next. Insert that hook. Make your triple crochet and just triple crochet to the end. Three, four, and here 
here is my last one. Your last single crochet it might be a little bit trickier to go into, but just stick that hook in. And there we go. So there is our row two. So every row after this is going to be very similar with just one main difference. So let's do one more row together so you can see. So we're going to chain four again, turn, triple crochet in the second triple crochet here because the first chain counts as a stitch, and triple crochet in the next three. So we're always going to have five triple crochet surrounding the shells. So if you ever um, find you have more or less than that, it means you've either added or subtracted a stitch. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, and now this is where the main difference comes in. Before we were skipping single crochet, right, to make the shell. Now we're going to be going in the shell. So we're gonna go in the middle of this shell. So you're gonna count the triple crochets and go in the center one. So there's going to be two on the right, two on the left, and you want to go in the middle one, right here. So go ahead and yarn over twice, and then just insert your hook into that middle triple crochet of the shell, and complete the triple crochet, and now just continue making the shell into that stitch. Chain one, triple crochet, chain one, triple crochet and we just need to do that two more times and here is our last one so that is what it looks like now we have a shell right on top of the shell we just made so to finish we're gonna skip these other triple crochet of the shell and you can tell which ones are of the shell um, because they kind of lean towards the right and then there's this big gap. So we want to go in the one right after the big gap right here. So I have my two yarn overs. I'm going to insert my hook, pull up and make my triple crochet and just do these five triple crochets on the edge. Three four and for this when you go into the chain it's funny I so this may be up to your preference I personally like to go in the third chain of the chain four um, I find that it it's a little bit tricky to go in the top one so I like to just go right here into the third one but you can do whatever your preference is there if you like to go into the top chain you can do that as well but I just find that it stands up a little bit straighter when I do that. Alright, so this is our first two rows of the mug rug. So if I bring over one of these, so we're right here and to continue you're just, you would just do three more rows exactly like we just did. No differences at all, just do three more rows and that should get you a pretty square mug rug so there will be five shell rows. Now I'm just going to do one more row and then I'm going to show you how to do the border right after that. Okay, so for simplicity's sake, I've just done one more row because this will be enough to give you an idea of how to do the border. Just remember you'll do five shell rows total and it'll be the same exact concept when you come down to do the border. I'll just have less on the side to do. So to start with the border, we're not going to turn and go this way because then the border will be the, ro the wrong side will be facing. The right side of this coaster is row one. So we want to keep the border facing this way, outward. So instead of turning and doing this way, we're going to go directly down the left side of the mug rug. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to turn it so that the left side is like the top of my work. And I'm just going to go right inside this hole of the last triple crochet I just made and make a single crochet. And I'm just going to do two more single crochet right inside there. And then what you can do as you do this is you can kind of scooch them out so they aren't like bunched together, but they form more of a straight line. Then, so this is where it can be up to your, your individual preference and your tension and stuff like that. I chose to do 
two single crochet anytime I come to a chain space on the side and then three anytime I came to a, a triple crochet because these tend to be a little bit taller than the chain spaces. So that's kind of what it looks like when I do that. And that is what you would just keep repeating down all five rows of the shell. Then when we get to the corner here, we're gonna do two in the corner. So there's not like a specific space you have to go in here. You just kind of want to feel it out, look for where the corner naturally falls and then do two single crochets in that corner and that will just form a nice rounded kind of square kind of rounded corner. Now from here we would just go in the chains all the way across. So here we don't really need to worry about any weird side things. We just go right in the chains. So if I zoom it in a little bit, this is the space I'm going in here right under the chain row we originally worked. So this is what that looks like as it kind of starts to form. And then you would just keep going, do two single crochet in the corner, then do the same thing up the right side. So two in the chain spaces, three in the regular triple crochets. And I'll meet you back when we get over to here, this corner right here. All right, so here I've gone across the bottom and the next side, and I've just done two single crochets in this chain space, this last chain space on the side here. Now, because of the way this has worked, we're kind of going to do the regular single crochet and we're going to do the corner in this space too. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more, and you, you just want to kind of do it until it forms a nice corner. So I'm going to say that's about right for me. Although I might do one more and then I can kind of pull it so that these two are going horizontally and these three are going vertically. Then I'm just going to start going in the regular triple crochets from the last shell row we did. So let me come in a little bit closer so you can see how this is looking. So we've got five here and you can feel that out and do however many you think is perfect. Then we have four coming in these triple crochet. And now we just gotta work over the shell. So we're gonna actually work in every chain space, not in the triple crochet, because we kinda wanna make it as flat as we can. It'll be a little bit rounded, but that's okay. So I've gone in the first chain space, I'm skipping the next triple crochet, going right in the chain space, skipping the triple crochet, going in the chain space, one more time, and then we're gonna skip the last triple crochet and just go in these last four here that are not part of the shell. Now, when you get back to here, you should see this is kind of the same deal that we just did over here where the corner is going to be right here. So I would just do one more single crochet in that original um, chain space that we started in and then slip stitch to the beginning one. And from there, your border is done. So let's kind of look at this. You can see it forms like kind of square. They're square corners, but they're kind of rounded square corners. Now, you might be thinking you're done, but you're not quite done yet because there's a few more things you need to do to make these coasters amazing. The first thing is fringe. So I'm going to direct you to one of my other videos to learn how to put on fringe if you don't know already. That will be listed in the cards and the description box. With this fringe, I made it between um, one and one and a half inches. This fringe turned out a little bit shorter, closer to one inch. This fringe was a little bit longer, closer to one and a half inches. Now, of course, to make that fringe, you have to start out with double the size because all of them will be folded in half for the fringe. And if you're not familiar with that, it is, it is all explained in that video I was talking about. But basically what I'm saying is this fringe is about one to one and a half inches, which means the strands you cut should be around two to two and a half inches, or even three inches if you want more that you can trim off at the end. So that's the first thing you need to do. And then secondly, you absolutely have to steam block these coasters. It See how it just kind of is a little bit ruffled and it's not like laying flat right now? Just take um, a towel or if you have blocking boards, either will work and pin this out 
hold the corners out and pin it so that everything is straight and then take an, an iron or anything with a steam setting and go over it with steam um, to block this. Now if you're not familiar with steam blocking there are some things you need to keep in mind so you don't ruin your project. I do have a video on that as well. I will link it up here. Once you do those two things your mug rugs should be all done and ready to use. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and pattern. If you want the written pattern, that is in the description box as well. If you did like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and come subscribe for lots more free patterns and tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.